Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. And three things I was beautified and stood up beautifully, both before God and man. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. I want to give our praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Ha Kodash, if you give me the spirit to do this lesson. This lesson is going into the Israelite man and Israelite woman relationship has been destroyed. Okay? The pure marriage has been destroyed. All right? And Yahweh Bashem Shai is going to fix that. Okay, because there's a way that a man is supposed to treat a woman, and there's a way that a woman is supposed to treat a man. And us being the Israelites, we have the standard to show all the other nations of how marriage should be and how it should operate. But in our dead state, and coming back from our dead state, you can look at heathens like Ishmael, the Arabs, right? And you can see certain things and say, man, they got this together, they got that together which shows how far off we have become as a people, man. That's why I say it's been destroyed between the Israelite man and the Israelite woman, okay? Because it says a man and a wife that agree together, okay? That's a huge deal that the man and the woman agrees so they can work as a team. Because if you're going to be one and you don't agree on order, then guess what? The house is going to fall. They ain't going nowhere, all right? And that's perfect for the enemy to use. So from there, let's go to Sirach, chapter 26, starting at verse 13. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fat his bones. Right, it will fatten his bones, man. Okay, the grace of a wife. But the way we were raised is not like that, man. Okay, his bones get crushed. It gets weakened. Why? Because the Israelite woman doesn't have any grace towards her husband, man. Okay. For the most part, she has an evil heart towards him, which causes problems in households, all right? Which is why we have failed as a nation of keeping up marriages, okay, and taking it seriously, man, and honoring marriage, all right? Because we don't agree at the end of the day. Let's read that again. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. Let's go into discretion in the Google definition. It says the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing a fit or revealing private information. Right, man. Okay. So a woman with discretion, with this attitude, who watches her tongue and her mouth, okay, which is a humble thing to do, is watch her tongue and mouth. That fattens the man's bones. It makes him feel good. Why? Because he sees order. And that makes the man treat the woman a certain way. Okay, so let's go back to the scripture. The grace of the wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord, and there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. A mind well instructed. But how can a woman be well instructed if the man and woman don't agree? So how can he instruct her? No, she's going to roll her eyes. Okay, she's going to twerk her neck like, nigga, you ain't no king. <laughs> I ain't going to listen to you. That's what's going to happen, man. All right? And all these heathen nations have seen this. They can look at the black, the so-called black race, us, the Hebrew Israelites. They can look at us, okay, and see that our marriages and the man and the woman is a horrible, horrible relationship within our nation. The heathens see it. Okay, that's the truth. Let's go to verse 15. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace, and her contented mind cannot be valued. Right, her open mind, man. Okay, she's open to be led. A man sees that, especially a man of the Lord. Okay, a wise man can see if a woman is open to be led. But a foolish man, he don't see nothing, man. Okay, all he sees is ass, and you know what, and those hips. And that's it. Okay, but a wise man can see like, ah, you can't tell her nothing. She ain't for let me lead her. <laughs> that's the truth. Verse 16. As the sun when it arises in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So it is a beautiful thing, man. 
okay? Even more beautiful than the sun, the sunrise. Okay, to see that, man, to see that order, man, to see them agree together, to see her have an open mind and humble and shamefaced and ready to be led, ready to be taught, ready to be well instructed, man, especially if that man is a man of the Lord. Okay, in other words, he ain't going to take her off a cliff. All right, he's going to take her through that narrow path the right way and teach her. Okay. Now, from there, let's go to Sirach chapter 4, verse 30. Be not as a lion in thy house, nor frantic among thy servants. Right, man. So when a woman does not have that discretion, okay, that humility, that shame face, that open mind, that reverence, okay, to learn, to be led, when she doesn't have that, what happens in that household? That turns that man into a lion. If he's going to stay there, because he's going to be frustrated, he's going to be angry. Why? Because he know my woman does not see me as the head, neither does she want me to lead her. That's the problem. Okay? So now that man is like a lion in his household, man. Angry, roaring all the time. Okay? <laughs> That's the fact. Let's read it again. Be not as a lion in the house, nor frantic among thy servants. Okay, now, as a people, we have servants, right? We don't have them now because we're in captivity. But say we have some servants, okay? You have some servants. If the woman and the man doesn't agree, what's going to happen? That man going to turn to a lion. He's going to be pissed off if he cares about order, okay? If he's not a sucker, he's going to be pissed off. And then he's going to take it out on his service, man. They're going to feel that energy, that lion energy, man, that roaring, okay? Now, let's look at frantic in the Google definition. It says, wild or distraught with fear, anxiety, or other emotion. Right, man. Okay. She was frantic with worry. So that uneasy household is going to be a very uneasy household, man. Okay. That tension is what it's talking about. Okay. Who wants that, man? How can a relationship thrive? All right. It's not going to happen. So especially if it's a man of the Lord, you know, he has to focus. He has to do the work. This is not an environment that's good for him, man, to focus on the Lord, man. And if he cares at all, he's going to go crazy in that household. And, you know, he's going to be pissed off, man. Okay, those are the facts. Because why? He wants that fix. He wants order in his house. So if it's not, that's going to hit a nerve. All right? Now, from there, let's go to Colossians chapter 3, starting at verse 18. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit unto the Lord. Right, man. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. So we're supposed to love each other and deal with each other smoothly. Okay? It's supposed to be a smooth transaction. Okay? But what happens? The man gets bitter. Why? Because he see that the woman has no discretion. So his bones are not fat. Okay? In other words, she doesn't uplift him when he's down at all, man. She makes him more down and more down and more down, man. She weakens his knees. It talks about that, I think, in Sirach 26 or 25, the same chapter. Matter of fact, let me get it. Sirach 25, verse 23. Matter of fact, verse 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. A wicked woman abated the courage, making the heavy countenance, okay, in the household between man and woman, and a wounded heart, a wounded mind, Okay, the man can't even focus, man. A woman that would not comfort her husband in distress maketh weak hands and feeble knees. Right, man. Okay, that man becomes very, very heavy. That's the opposite of having fat bones, like I read. Okay, that's the opposite, man. That ain't fat bones. Now, from that, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. And that's what we want to do. Okay, I know what the talk is. GMS hate women. No, we don't. We love order, man. And when women are out of order, man, it puts a nasty ugh taste in our mouth, man. We hate it because we hate evil because it's evil, man. That's of the serpent. That goes back to the garden, man, being totally out of order, and now everybody destroyed. Through her, we all die. Okay, let's read it again. So ought man to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife 
loving himself. Right, man. Okay. And teaching you and guiding you is our love. Not just sitting there like, whatever. No, we trying to teach you and guide you through the right way. How about you, man? shy. That is love. Okay, but it's hard to do that when there's a whole lot of bickering and bad energy and bad facial expressions, horrible body language, no reverence, no respect. Now that's a problem. Okay, that is a problem. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. So it's a two-way street, man. Okay, it's a two-way street. You have to reverence that man. If you don't reverence that man, I mean, what you think you're going to get? You're going to get a horrible relationship. It's not going to work out, man. Okay, at all. But that's going to be fixed in the kingdom of heaven. See, in the kingdom of heaven, this is going to be fixed. All this is going to be fixed, but this is what has destroyed us, man. Not having this mentality and not having this order understanding. Okay, it has destroyed us. Period, man. From there, let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord Yahweh said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Right, man. So when a woman is not being that, okay, but she's being a demon, all right, then, mm mm. That ain't gonna work, man. Yahweh Shai did not create the woman for that. So right away, that's gonna be out of order. And if that man's a real man, it's not gonna work out. Okay, it's going to be a hard time in that house. Okay, those are the facts. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You hear that? As unto the Lord, man. So anything below that is considered bullshit. Anything below that is bullshit and not good, man. That's out of order. Okay, you wouldn't talk shit to the Lord, would you? If your Howard Shaw was down here, would you talk shit? You know what? Actually, there's women that will talk shit. That's how rebellious and messed up the woman's head is, man. The Israelite woman, man. Okay? Talking to the ones who just stand in that old serpent-like way that Esau taught you. Talking to you. Okay? But for you women that say you believe, right? And you got faith and respect and humility. Would you talk shit to the Lord if he came down here? No, man. You'll be all humble. You probably bow down to the ground. Okay, you supposed to have that respect for us, especially the man of the Lord. Okay, let's read it again. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. That's a big deal. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahweh Shai is the head of the church. Wow. Do you hear that, man? Okay. What man in the church gonna talk trash about Yahweh Shai that's in the church? He wouldn't dare do that, man. Okay? Why? Because he feared you. How about Shema was shy? He like, hell no, I ain't going there. Nope, I didn't say it. And even if his tongue slipped and he hears it, and he feels like what he said would offend you, how about Shema was shy? He quickly, quickly, speedily repents. Well, that's how the woman's supposed to be. Okay, when you slip with the tongue, you're supposed to be quickly in repentance, man, towards that man, towards your husband. Okay? For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Yahweh Shai is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. You hear that? He is the savior of the body through us. Come on now, you can't make this up, man. But this was lost, okay? Us losing our identity and our heritage has destroyed us as a whole, okay? Ain't no marriage, ain't no we're one. That has been destroyed. It's now building back up. Through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Through order, man. That's the only way. That is the only way. Let's end it on this. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14. House and riches are the inheritance of fathers, and a prudent wife is from Yahweh Bashim Shai. Right, man. And vice versa, man. Okay? A strong husband, a wise husband. Okay? It's from Yahweh Bashim Shai. So it really goes back to the curses. It shows you how real the curses are, man. But the good news is that the kingdom is at hand. It's close. And all this is going to be fixed, man. But it needs to be acknowledged on both sides what the problems are to the spirit, man. All right? It's a huge, huge problem what we have become as a nation when it comes to 
marriage and in general, especially the marriage. Okay, because without a marriage, the whole nation is going to be destroyed. Okay, without the woman and man agreeing, what's going to happen? Okay, you have one big nation and all the men and the women don't agree. <laughs> what's going to happen is what you see with us here in Babylon and destroyed. So with that, I hope you're edified. I want to give my praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash, forgive me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honors to the Elders of Great Millstone. And Shalom to Yahweh after doing the truth and sincerity. Shalom.